So before Paul, early Christians believed that Prophet Jesus asked them to repent and obey the commandments to have eternal life in paradise. But after Paul, new Christians believe that you don't have to obey the commandments to do anything to enter paradise. You just have to say that Jesus is son of God or part of a trinity and he was crucified and resurrected from death. How convenient. This means that if you are a murderer or a rapist who believes in the resurrection of Jesus, you will be in paradise. And if you're a righteous person who prays to God and donates to the poor and helps society, but doesn't believe Paul's claim about Jesus, you will be in hell. Have you ever seen a judge in court saying to a criminal, instead of sending you to jail for your bank robbery, I will kill my son to forgive you and set you free. A debt must be repaid to God, only it's not about restoring a sense of justice and honor in God, but rather in finding a source for God's wrath due to our sin. Jesus took our place, taking upon himself the curse of immeasurable pain that was rightfully ours so that we could go free. Again, what sort of God is so filled with wrath that he demands that his son die so that he can be satisfied? Give it a second. Think about it. And instead of punishing the criminal for his mistake, the judge will kill his son instead. His son. That's amazing news for the criminal. Why wouldn't someone who loves to live a sinful life believe that? It's so easy and convenient, just believe a story and do whatever you want in life without limits. And then enter God's eternal paradise. But is that really fair? You tell me, if Adolf Hitler believed in the Trinity and the resurrection story, he should be in eternal paradise, right? But is that really fair? I ask you, do you keep the laws and the commandments? You say no. I say, why not? He says, the law is nailed to the cross. Why not? He says, we are living under grace. That's what the Christian says. You're living under grace. I say, where did you get this? This idea that the law is nailed to the cross is done away with. Where did you get it? So he quotes me Philippians, Galatians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, Colossians. And so who's this? Who's this? Timothy? Romans? Who's all this? What's this? Who's that? It's a Paul, 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 Paul. I said, who's your master? You say, Jesus. What does he say? You're contradicting Jesus. And Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. Master is Jesus. What he tells you, I say, I listen to my master, Jesus. He never had the pig. He, none of his disciples ever touched that pork. You call it pork, ham, bacon, whatever you call it. He never touched that stuff. None of his disciples ever touched it. And you are all pig eaters. Christians. Where did you get this? He said, Peter had a dream. On that dream, now you eat pigs. When my master never ate it, he wouldn't eat it. It was abhorrent to him. He killed 2,000 pigs. One hit, he destroyed them all. You know that? But now you don't listen to him. You are now living in the graves. I said, are you circumcised? He says, no. I said, why aren't you? It's a major commandment God gave. Your Lord was Christ, Jesus Christ was circumcised. I said, what is good for your God should be good for you. No, you won't circumcise. Why won't you? This is a law of God. He entered into between Abraham and his descendants forever. And you claim to be spiritual descendants. How does that absolve you? Is Jesus was circumcised and you are not? He said, no. He says, Paul said, circumcision, circumcision is nothing and non-circumcision is nothing. As Jesus says, not even one jot or one tittle is to pass from the law. Can't you see? You are not following Jesus. You're following Paul, Paul, Paul. He is the real founder of Christianity. Paul, not Jesus. 